and answer questions raised by members of parliament directly. Honorable Speaker, sir, the member for Chuka Igamba Ngombe has asked the circumstances that led, he has asked for an explanation of the circumstances that led to the killing of Mr. Daniel Mutembei on 18th March 2023 in Kwego village, Robate location, Tarakanidi County, which was reported by police on the following day, 19th of March 2023. Mr. Speaker, sir, on 18th of March 2023, a Mr. Lenan Njeru Mboba from Robate location reported that his cousin, Daniel Mutembei, a male adult approximately that four years, had been attacked the previous night by known people, according to the report, severely and critically injured, left for the dead, rained on for the rest of the night, recognized by villagers early in the morning who were taking milk to the collection point, still alive early in the morning. The speaker, although critically injured, it was reported that Mr. Mutembei was able to talk and identified those that attacked him and gave their names, five suspects. He was taken to hospital, but the injuries were already too much and he succumbed at the Chuka Referral Hospital. He succumbed to the injuries. That report was made and entered into the OB. Mr. Speaker, sir, and, and, and just for the clarity of the member and the House, that report was made the same morning of 19th March, 2023. Investigations ensued, and before any statements could be taken from any of the suspects, the same suspects went to the Chuka High Court and obtained anticipatory bail, restraining their arrest and prosecution until the matter is heard and determined or until further orders were issued by the High Court. Those orders, Mr. Speaker, sir, were issued by Lady Justice Lucy Gistari of the Chuka High Court on 27th of March, 2023. And the order specifically restrained the police from arresting the state persons the orders also required that the matter be heard today, the 12th of April, 2023. Today, the matter was, uh, came up for mention. And Mr. Speaker, I can report to the House that in the morning, the parties were heard, and I can also report to the House, Mr. Speaker, that for us in the ministry, we instructed the State Council to represent the, uh, those parties that uh, against whose orders were given, including the Inspector General of Police, the DCI, and uh, all those who were sued. The family of the victim 
the late Mutembe also had hired a lawyer this morning, and both Mr. Mutembe's lawyer and the state council made a very, very strong argument in an oral application for two things. One, the vacation of the anticipatory bill, which was lapsing today, that it should not be extended. And two, warrants of arrest to issue against the suspects. And uh, both the deceased lawyer and the state council were on one page, of course, against the opposition from the defense council, the ruling on this matter is before the judge this afternoon at 2.30, the same time that the minister is appearing before this house. In between, Mr. Speaker, on Saturday the 8th of April, which is Easter Saturday, the victims were supposed to bury the late Mutembe, but they felt that this matter had taken too long and could not understand why a matter where there was, in their view, overwhelming evidence pointing at the killers, the killers should still be out there. And notwithstanding the anticipatory bail, they demanded that the arrest be done. There was a serious demonstration for most of the afternoon on Saturday from 3 p.m to well into the night. They were carrying the coffin of the late Mutembe and uh, demonstrated the whole afternoon, engaging the police in running battles. The police tried to talk to them diplomatically to bury the deceased as we wait for the finalization of the matter by way of appearance, appearance before court today, but they could hear none of it. In fact, Mr. Speaker, the protesters engaged police in, um, in, in, in um, throwing missiles when, when the police tried to use tear gas. And, and it, it was really a very, very uh, rowdy uh, protest. And, and of course, one would understand the public hunger, given the circumstances which uh, the deceased had died. Uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, uh, we were able to, the police were able to open the road much later in the night, but some, an incident occurred around 7 p.m. the same night. One of the local young uh, leaders, the chairperson of the Tarakanidhi Border Border Association, one, Willis Mugambi, Elias Kiraku, was shot dead in the chest around 7 p.m. and died on the spot. And that complicated the matter. And uh, immediately that happened the same night, we dispatched through the Inspector General of Police the Internal Affairs Unit of the National Police Service from Nairobi uh, the head of the Internal Affairs Unit actually was dispatched the same night to Chuka to travel there and personally take over the investigations, mainly the investigations around um, the shooting of Willis Mugambi Elias Kiraku uh, because it was alleged again by some who made reports that they suspected that he could have been killed by a police officer in the process of the riots. So we dispatched the internal affairs unit. It's still there. We have crucial evidence, and we believe very shortly we'll be narrowing down to the person who shot and killed Mr. Mugambi. At the same time, the Independent Police Oversight Authority the following day on Sunday dispatched their team to investigate that incident. IPOA is independent. So while the internal investigations by the police is handled by the Internal Affairs Unit, 
from Nairobi. The IPOA team also from Nairobi is handling an independent investigation so that there are no perceptions of internal collusion or preference whatsoever. The two teams are working, and I am told a lot of progress has been made, but up to now, the conclusion, uh, the, 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 the investigations are not concluded. So Mr. Speaker, sir, in, the, in between, we have reinforced uh, security as presence. As late as last night, there were incidents of, again, um, a few youths trying to block roads, and we have deployed the regional police commander, Mr. Rono Bunei from Embu, or Eastern Region, is the one personally dealing with that matter because, again, there were aspersions cast at our officers who are based in Chuka. Both the officer commanding Chuka Police Station and the county commander for Tarakanidi County, I can report, right honorable speaker, that as we speak in the meantime, we felt that in order to build public confidence in our officers, the Inspector General of the National Police Service has transferred both the OCS of Chuka Police Station and the County Police Commander of Tarakanidi, and new officers have been put uh, uh, in place already as we speak. So that's where we are, Mr. Speaker. We do not have any conclusive evidence. I want to assure the House that, one, we will respect the outcome of the court decision regarding the anticipatory bail, which we have opposed through the State Council. Once that bail is, anticipatory bail is lifted, and based on the evidence we have, all suspects are going to be rounded up in minutes but we cannot violate a court order, and we really hope that our case will be favored by the judge this afternoon to allow us continue with the justice process beyond the point it is at the moment. With regard to the killers of Mr. Kiraku, the Boda Boda Chair, again, we believe in the next few days we will be able to have enough evidence to help us uh, take action, including prosecution of the, of the suspect. I think, uh, Honorable Speaker, that is all I have up to now. I remain at the disposal of this House for any supplementary issues, and also with regard to the other questions that are listed in the order paper this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Major Dong, do you have any supplementary to that? 